Hello my Bradley, hope you are doing very well as always. So this is a video what I've been thinking about doing for some time and I guess it's the do's and don'ts of what to do, more importantly what not to do as a musician, as a guitar player, but I say musician because I think this works across the board in the contemporary music genre. If you're pop, rock, jazz, blues, uh, classical musicians have a different rule book, I believe, um, but in the contemporary world, but some of this will, I think, still work in the classical thing as well. So, um, but I, I, I wanna stress that these, what I'm about to say, these are my opinions, and it would be very actually intriguing to hear what your opinions are as well, if you're gonna agree with some of the things I'm about to say, uh, and some of the things uh, I need to listen as well for myself, because one of the things I'm gonna say, I need to get better at myself. <laughs> so the first thing, what is very, very important in the musician world is learn the songs. It's very, very important to learn the songs if you're in a cover band, a wedding band, a, a corporate band, if you're doing a high profile session, if you're doing a low pro profile session, it's important to learn the songs. And it does mean putting in the work, you know, putting in the time to learn those songs for the gig. Um, a lot of people don't put in the work and turn up and don't know the songs. But, you know, this is where ear training comes in, not relying on tablature or music notation and whatnot and sitting there and be able to hear a song and hear the G chord. It's, it's important, you know, and it's important to learn those songs so that you can really then embrace yourself on the gig, in your performance, if you're recording, if you're more importantly live playing here. Um, if you know the songs, you're not thinking and you can just play and, and have fun, which is the most important thing. So learn the songs. Now number two, which is a kind of link on to number one, is don't rely on iPads. It, so it's a personal thing for me, and this isn't really for vocalists, and I'll come to that in a second. This is more for guitar players, bass players, drummers, keyboard players, who just roll up to the gig, they haven't learnt the songs, and just stare at an iPad. And for me, that really isn't cool. And also, from an audience perspective, if you're looking at a band <clears throat> and they're just staring at an iPad the whole time, it's not cool, you know? And I just think it's, it's kind of a, a segue into one, uh, into the first one I was just saying about learning the songs, is I look at it a little bit as laziness. Now, a little story I can say on this, just before Christmas, uh, December was a manic month for myself and uh, lots going on personally, professionally, it was, it was crazy. And <clears throat> I got asked to do a, a, a session, a live gig session for, for an artist and I'd done a couple of acoustic gigs before with them, but I've never done a full band. And they contacted me about four weeks before the gig, asking me if I would do this live gig at a really cool venue in London, and if I could help put the band together and that kind of stuff. And I was like, I'm busy that week, but we got four or five weeks of the gig. Yeah, it'd be no problem. I can learn the songs, you no know, chip away at them and whatnot. All good. As time went on, <clears throat> over these four or five weeks, um, communication wasn't the greatest. And basically, the gig was on the 20, Thursday the 21st of December, and I found out finally what the songs were on the Friday. I won't go into the story, it was a nightmare to find out what those songs were, but finally got to find out what the songs were. But I was gigging on the Saturday, I had Sunday free, gigging all day on the Monday, gigging all day on the Tuesday, was teaching all day on the Wednesday, and the gig was Thursday. We had to do a rehearsal in the morning, and then the gig. So I had just the Sunday to learn, I think it was 15 or 18 songs of original music, which I hadn't played before. So I got up early Sunday, came in here, locked the door, and just 
went nuts in learning the songs and kind of worked them out. Maybe this would be quite a good video actually and talk about how to work out songs. But kind of worked them out and then just went over and over and over and over and over the songs. And then in the car when I was driving around, so when I was going to gigs and stuff like that, I was listening to the songs and in my head playing them as well. And then I think, I think on the Wednesday evening, I might have done another hour just quickly bashing through some of them. Um, so that's right, yeah. So I had the Sunday and about an hour on the Wednesday the night before. And then that was it, Thursday. And you know what? We, and I know the other guys were the same, but we did it. We, we pulled it off and it all went great. So I didn't use any iPads. What I did do, I had a couple, I wrote on, you know, a bit of paper, a few songs, a few cheat sheets, just little structural ideas, like coming on the blah, blah, blah here or whatever, you know, or a couple of chords there. And I just had them on the floor next to my pedal board. I didn't have it bang right in front. So if, a call, sometimes gig will come in last minute, you might get a call 12 o'clock in the afternoon, can you do a gig that night? Of course, you're gonna want cheat sheet, core charts, an iPad, something like that. Absolutely. Um, but if you've got time, and it's a lot of times people do regular gigs and they still just rely on iPads, it's like, no, no. So learn the songs, don't stare at an iPad all the time. Could even as an audience member, I've been there, I've been at weddings and people just stare at iPads and it's like, no, 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 no. So learn the songs, don't use an iPad. I don't even own an iPad for that very reason. Number three. Make sure your gear is working. May seem a very obvious statement. You'll be surprised. <laughs> You'll be very surprised. Now, again, gear can break, absolutely. A tube can die, um, a solder can go in your input socket, string snap, pedals die, no, all sorts of things. These things happen. But, again, through experience, when it's week in, week out, at every single gig, people are turning up and then their gear isn't working and they're sitting there cross-legged trying to figure out what piece of gear, what pedal has died on their ridiculously oversized pedal board. It's like working out at home, when you're at the gig, you want it to be working, you know? So make sure your gear is working, boys and girls. Now, this may seem silly, but this is a pet peeve of mine. Number four, don't drink in front of the audience. Now, what I mean by that, you're on stage, blah, blah, and then you, you, you've got a big, no, what's those, uh, the big kind of water bottles, what keep it really cool for ages. You've got one of those, you're picking that up, and then you're swigging it right in front of the audience. I just don't think that looks good. So, of course, we need to hydrate. Very, very important. But just turn around. <laughs> you don't have to be, oh, you know, like, hear me going like this, oh, mm, num, 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 num. you know, it might have a little bit of a water moustache going on. No, just, just turn around, have a sip, and put it back. It's just being a bit professional, and also being cool. You know, you want to be a little bit cool. So don't drink, don't oh, swig your water. I'll get onto something else in a minute about what to drink, but don't swig it oh, right in front of the audience, you know, just, or, or you get people who kind of take it off slowly there. <sighs> you know, and this could be like another audience, uh, another band member is talking on the microphone. You know, and they're just sitting out, and then put it, and then slowly put it, and they, then not only that, on the mic stand might have like a cup holder. No, 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 no. Get rid of all that, all right? Have it on the floor. Just turn around and drink it. Easy, easy. <laughs> Another pet peeve, number five. Tune your guitar properly. Now, what I mean by this, I'm gonna need a guitar, one second. Okay, you got your guitar, right? So when you pick the string, all right, sorry, the way I've got this camera here is not, it's a bit awkward, but you can just pick it once. 
right? You don't need to be doing this. No, 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 no. The guitar can sustain, okay? So you pick it once. Fine tune it. All right, next one. Fine tune it. Just, just pick it and let it sustain. You don't need to be doing this. No, 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 no. It's irritable. <laughs> <laughs> it can really piss people off, like me, and you get like a twitch start going on. It, it, it's, it's loud. So again, if you've got the singer of the band talking, and then you've got the guitar player going, ding, 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 you can go for a buy and that's still ringing out. <laughs> so, you don't need to be doing that. You don't, no, no, just pick it once and tune it, all right? It's better, it's cooler, it's nicer. <laughs> this is turning to a therapy session, I tell you. Number six, enjoy yourself. Smile when you play, you know? A simple smile goes a long way and looking up and looking at the audience and kind of engaging and smiling with them. Now, I remember when I was about 20, 21, it's hard to remember now, uh, early 20s. And, um, you know, you'd get friends and that to your gigs and things like that. I remember my friend Mark, um, he said, oh, when you play, you always look down. I was like, do I? I was like, no, I look up, don't I? No, no, no. He goes, no, you're always looking down. And then I would see pitch, I mean, there wasn't as many, social media wasn't as massive as it is. It was just starting to come when I was that age. But it um, might have been younger, might have been 19, 20, but regardless. But when I would see photos, I was like, I am always looking down. You know, like some, you know I'd have li I had little spikes back then. If you've seen my video when I was in my old band, Biff Tech, I had little small spikes and stuff. And you would see, you know, you could see the scalp of my head. And, you know, I, I would be, a lot of times looking at my right hand, looking there, looking there, you know, I wasn't really looking up. And I remember from then, it just played in my head, like, look up. And uh, and even, you know, fast forward a few years, and my mum, bless her, would come to my gigs, and she'd be like, smile more. And she's right, Mark was right, you know, like, look up, smile more. And I remember when... Eddie Van Halen passed away, because I've always you know, respected and liked Eddie Van Halen, but I've never been a die-hard Van Halen fan. You know, they just weren't really played over here in, in, the, in the UK, uh, apart from Jump and... Uh, give me love. The Sammy Hagar single one they did. Um, and so, like us all, we were watching a load of Van Halen video footage and listening to a lot of Van Halen and that. And one thing I always saw with Eddie Van Halen, he always was smiling when he played, always. He's putting off this amazing stuff and he's smiling, you know? And I was like, that's, that's why he's the goat, as the kids say. Um, so, you know, I know in the, in the early 80s, you know, shoegazy music was a thing. You think Joy Division and they're just kind of standing there and they're boring as hell and just staring at the feet. Um, I, I've never really been into that kind of music and I think the shoegazing thing, um, you know, uh, it's just not my cup of tea. I just think, you know, looking up, looking at your audience, if you've got four people in the audience, you know, and just give them a little smile, you know, and engage with them and look like you're having fun and enjoying yourself playing the guitar and it all kind of goes back or your chosen instrument and it all goes back to all the things I've been saying about like learning the songs if you know the songs you know you're, you're much more comfortable playing because you know where you're going as opposed to like oh shit is it this bit here? Uh, you know don't get you wrong we've got to look at our hands sometimes don't get you wrong you know like there's some hard things on the guitar to play um, but just looking like you're having fun, looking up, 
smile, enjoy yourself, have fun. It's playing music, you know, just like playing a game. You're playing, you're having fun with it. So um, don't stare at your feet. Look up and smile. <laughs> Number seven, be nice. Be nice to hang around. When you're in bands, if you're doing to no touring, doing lots of gigs, if you're in the studio, you're around a lot of people. And if you're a bit of a twat, <laughs> you know, it's gonna start to grate on people. And then when you're not there, you know, other people start, other people in the band, other musicians, they start talking about you like, oh, Mike, he's always doing, no, he's always going about smiling. Or Mike's doing, you know what I mean? Like, but if you're a nice person and just, don't get you wrong, have a laugh, you know, but just be nice to hang around with. Um, and also, uh, no matter what the country, um, the music industry is actually quite small and word can easily get around, you know, kind of everyone kind of knows each other or or there's like, you know, three pathways to back to you. You know, I might not know X and I might not know Y, but I know Z. So my connection to X and Y is through Z, you know what I mean? So that's, that's another thing entirely, but you know, regarding, you know, being in a band, you know, you wanna be a nice person to hang out with. You can be the greatest, musician ever but if you're rude ag ar ar arrogant um just not pleasant to be around at all people aren't going to work with you if you're an okay musician but the nicest guy in the world or girl um you know uh, your gear's working you're cool to hang out with you're considerate of others you've got a personality um chances are they're going to want you in the band or on the project or whatnot. So, yeah, be a nice, be a nice dude to hang out with. Right, number eight is a tough one because I am really guilty of this, but it is important. Number eight is be on time. <laughs> now, I'm laughing because if anybody is watching this who has worked with me, my timekeeping is a bit rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it is important to be on time and I'm tr I, I, ca I can be on time and I am on time I'm just late much more than I am on time there's times when I get there's like mics here or the, the lot of time the running jokes is like if you're here before Mike like you're really late <laughs> You know what I mean? But, you know, um, I, 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 I'm, I feel I'm getting better and I have gotten better. Um, but it is important to be on time. It is important. And I am, when it's super, super, super important things, I make damn sure I'm on time. Um, and I am, I, I'm, I, I, I am, <laughs> I'm stuttering because I'm terrible at this myself, but it's very important to be on time. It is. I'm gonna leave it as that. <laughs> Number nine is is a given, but don't play drunk. It's uh, it's not good. It's not big. It's not good. It's not smart. It's not clever. Um, I have played with people who are no. I, so again, if I can just speak for myself for one second. Um, you know, I take music very like I'm. I'm. If you know me, if you've met me, I'm. You know, I guess there's the rumor that I'm a bit of a joker. I'm a bit of a cheeky chappy, uh, but I do take playing music very, very seriously. It's my. It's my next to my family. You know, it's my world, and um, you know, it's the thing I'm most passionate about next to my family, obviously. Um, and so when you've got someone who is on stage or in the studio or whatever you're doing and they're pissed when they're drunk you know you you and the other guys or girls in the band can't be on their a game either because you've got someone who's dropping notes left right and center so and also the smell like i feel so sorry like a good friend of mine 
um, I've known him for nearly 20 years, right? And he's, he's a sober guy. He doesn't drink at all, never is drunk. And when I think back to when we was in our late, no, late teens, early 20s, going out on the weekends or whatever and getting drunk like you do when you're that age. And he was always around us stone cold sober. The smell he would have had to put up with what you only notice when you're a sober person as well. So when you're doing a gig with someone and they're talking to you and you're in the backstage room, whatever, and the booze is just reeking off them, you're like, oh, mate, I don't want to be around you. You know what I mean? Like, So, yeah, don't, don't get wasted on a gig. It's just, um, yeah, don't do it. Be, just be a bit more professional, you know. After the gig, yeah, do whatever you want. And number 10, the last one, I probably could have gone on for another 20, but we'll, we'll, we'll do it at 10. But number 10, uh, which is another performing aspect, I think, is eye contact. Look at your other musicians when you're playing. So, so important. And also looking, looking with your ears, you know. So if you can hear that the drummer or the guitarist or the bass player, whatever, is like dropping it down. You're looking at each other, give each other or not. Dynamically, you're bringing it down, you know, have a little groove down. Dynamically, bring it back up, pull things back, whatever. Eye contact and, you know, well, visual communication is so, so, so important. Um, again, a case in point uh, actually happened recently. Uh, played uh, a gig with some fabulous guys and girls who I adore. Great musicians, great players. The drummer was a dep, and he was just tunnel vision. And you know, we're kind of dropping it down. He's just, it, he's just still two four all the way, you know. And he, he was just kind of look again the shoegazing thing. Just wasn't looking at all. Um, and so. And I'm again. I remember this when I was a younger player as well. So I don't. I, I should say I don't want this to be like, oh, I'm perfect. Mike Bradley is perfect. He doesn't do anything wrong. I've done many, many things wrong, and everything I'm saying is stuff I've learned in 20 years, and I continue to learn. So I just I should probably say that very quickly. Um, these are just things I picked up in the 20, uh, uh, 22 years of performing. Oh my goodness. I'm getting old. <laughs> when I was saying about you know, looking up and eye contact and stuff, well, sorry, this is eye contact, but looking up at the audience, but also looking up at your fellow musicians, you know, engaging like, oh, it's uh, boom, you know, we're coming in here or whatever. It's just, and if someone's not having, I get a bit lost or anything, you're looking with your eyes and also looking with your ears. So you can hear if someone's bringing something down or if the drummer wants to push this forward a bit, go with him or her, you know, if they want to pull it back, go with them. Eye contact's very, very important with your fellow musicians, work colleagues. So, um, yeah, what do you think of this? Uh, I oh, feel like it's been a therapy. Some of that has been built up. Um, and again, this is stuff I'm, the timekeeping thing, uh, for example, um, I'm trying to take stock of a lot of the stuff I'm saying here as well. But do you, are you a fellow musician, guitar player, bass player, singer, drummer? Uh, I should say as well, I can't remember if I said it when I was saying about the iPad thing. If you're a vocalist, I'm awful at remembering lyrics. I mean, I'm a guitarist who sings, I'm not a singer. Um, and, but I have done solo gigs before and I'm like, I, I need the lyrics. I, I'm, unless it's my own song, I'm terrible at remembering lyrics unless I really, really, really know the song. But because I'm coming at it from a guitarist who's singing as opposed to a singer, you know, singing is not my first instrument. So I should say actually on, on the iPad front that if you are a singer, apps, I get it. You know, it's hard to remember the lyrics 25 songs you know what i mean you're gonna need you're gonna need something you know but at the same time if you are a singer and you know that's your chosen instrument because i look at singing as an instrument um 
hopefully you put the work in so that you don't need to stare at a bit of paper, the lyric or the iPad, the lyric sheet, you know. So, sorry, that just came in my head. Um, but yeah, I'd love to know your thoughts. What do you, uh, do you agree with me? Do you 100% disagree with me? Which um, I'm absolutely expecting some people to. And uh, again, I do want to say I am nowhere near, I'm the complete opposite of perfect, <laughs> you know, but um, I do, I do take pain, you know, very, very seriously, you know, and um, I think, you know, a lot of the stuff I said is, is needed to be said, should we say, you know, anyway. Lots of love to you all, as always. Thanks for your love and support. It'd be great to hear your feedback on this. And if anybody is watching this again and laughing about the time thing, yeah, I know, I get it. I get it. Yeah. Anyway, lots of love, guys. I've been Mike Brelly, you've been you. I'll see you next video. Mike Brelly signing out. Bye.